Welcome to Give Day Tampa Bay 2018, live from the WEDU studios at the Berkman Family Broadcast Center. Good afternoon. Welcome to Give Day at Tampa Bay 2018. My name is Allison Croft. I'm the noon and 5 o'clock anchor with 10 News, but I'm going to be your host for the next hour of our live broadcast here. Thanks for joining us. We are here at the WEDU studios in Tampa with representatives from some of the over 400 nonprofits who are participating in Give Day Tampa Bay. The theme of Give Day is live here, give here, and making a donation is very easy and you can do it quickly too. All you have to do is log on to giveday.org and search for your favorite charity from our list of participants. When you hit the donate button, you will fill in your credit card information and then you make your secure gift. The minimum donation is only $5, so that's not a lot and you're going to have that donation go a long way give day will be going on until midnight tonight so there is plenty of time we're going to be streaming from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. so in the next hour I'm going to be talking and listening to various nonprofit groups who are making a difference here in Tampa Bay our next guests are going to be joining us they're getting seated at this very point so we want to check out our leaderboard very quickly and get you all updated on the total of your donations that you've been making throughout the day today All right, we're going to continue to check out that leaderboard as we go throughout the next hour. But again, continue to go for Give Day Tampa Bay and continuing to make a difference here in the Tampa Bay community. Our first guests are with AMI Kids. We have Mike Thornton and Marcus Woods. Thank you both for being on here. Thank you for having How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Very good. First of all, uh, Mike, tell us a little bit about AMI Kids. You know, AMI Kids is an organization that works with at-risk kids from age 11 to 18. Uh, we have four programs in this in this Tampa Bay area, and we work with kids on education, vocational training, um, personal uh, skills as far as being able to communicate and behavior because a lot of them have trouble adjusting to school, and then mental health issues. How do students get into this program? They come mainly two ways, either from referrals from the community um, or the Department of Juvenile Justice. All right. So, Marcus, you're here today to talk with us and tell us a little bit about it. What has your experience been like with AMI Kids? Um, I was put in AMI Kids by my parents because I was being bad in class. I wasn't listening or respecting to my teachers, mm -hmm. and I was off the track of graduation. I wasn't going to graduate. And AMI Kids has helped me a lot because it's helped me get back on track with my grades and helped me learn to respect people, that, especially seniors that are older than me. Mm -hmm. And that's all thanks to my mentors and my teachers because they're the ones that have, like, if I have something going on at home that I can't talk to my mom or my dad about, mm -hmm. I can just go to my mentors and they can help me, like, work through my problems. And my academics, if I don't understand something, my teacher can just, if I need help, I just ask him or her. How old are you? I'm 15. 15 years old. So you are getting into high school and you've got a lot on <laughs> yes, your plate right now so this has been a good experience for you yes ma'am it's really improved my life how long have you been uh, working with AMI kids about a month and a half a month and a half so talk about you mentioned some mentors and some of these relationships that you have created yes, being a part of it what's that like it's very more you know a lot of schools are like just you don't really know your mentor or your teacher mm -hmm. but this school is more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of you actually get to know the person instead of it just being a face, you know? Yeah. How has that helped you out? It's, whew, a lot. It's given me a lot to talk about, like my dad getting my brother kicking, getting kicked out the house, and I got to talk to my mentors about that. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful because I don't want to talk to my dad about it because, you know, you might have a different opinion. Sure. Yeah. How has this kind of changed your outlook on your future and what you want to do? I definitely want to like go back to regular school and be a lot better than I was before and respect people that I didn't get to respect before and that they didn't deserve how I treated them before. Yeah, You're very well spoken. Thank you. And AMI Kids, obviously, it's donations like people are making today. So where does that money go and how does it help kids in our community? We're working on a technology initiative to give our staff more time to spend with the kids. Mm -hmm and to do the great work that they're doing. Uh, so we have a, um, a donor that's matching every dollar, dollar for dollar. 
And so, you know, every gift, you know, we'll have a match. And that's for our technology initiative. This uh, day like today is probably really important for Very an organization important. like yours, isn't it? Why is that? You know, we get an opportunity to first tell people about the great things that we're doing, but get, get the community involved in some of the great work that's going on here in Tampa Bay, you know, at our programs. And kids like Marcus are really benefiting from the, what they're learning at the programming and changing their lives. Mm -hmm. Can people get involved with AMI Kids? They can reach out to us on our website at amikids.org. And if they're interested in, in being a mentor or getting involved, we, we also look for tutors and getting involved with the program. Or if, if you know, they want to you know, give, they can also but just reach out to us on, via our website. And if there's a way that families or if schools want to reach out to you because they have uh, someone like Marcus that they want to get involved, how do they do that? The same way. They can, there's a, a contact us on our website and just reach out to us and, and just let us know. And we, and we would be glad to uh, uh, to uh, connect them with the right program. We have programs in Pinellas County, uh, Tampa, uh, Hillsborough County, mm -hmm. and in Manatee County. Now, Marcus, people are watching at home, and we're wanting them to donate because, like you said, it's helped you so much. Yeah. How, what would you say to people watching this that know that if they make this donation, they're going to help? What would you tell them about that? It's a good idea. It's very beneficial to children of society today, especially with the Internet and all the society, like, judging people and just their decisions it's very crucial what would you say to other kids that maybe kind of lost a little bit or looking for some mentors or for some help in the community yeah if you need like someone to talk to or if your therapist isn't working or if you're booing bad in school definitely come to a nonprofit program like ami well you're doing a great job thank you thank you for coming by and good luck to you thank you for having me all right thank you so much thank you appreciate what you're doing in our community for sure our next guests are going to be seated here in just a little bit, but we're going to take you back to our leaderboard and get you updated on the total of all of your donations today on Give Day Tampa Bay. Thanks for being with us today on Give Day Tampa Bay. Our next guest is Ian Adair. He is with Grace Point Foundation. Thanks for coming by today. Thank you so much for having me. How's the day going? It is great. A lot of excitement around Give Day. Super excited with all the support. Mm -hmm. And we are just so blessed and feel grateful to be here. So tell us about Grace Point Foundation. The Grace Point Foundation is the philanthropic arm of Grace Point, Inc., which is the largest behavioral health uh, facility in Tampa Bay area. We serve around 22,000 children and adults each year through behavioral health services and addiction services mm -hmm. and we are focusing today for give day on one of our homeless outreach and engagement programs called the coffee shop and so tell us about what that is the coffee shop has started started back up actually after a couple of years a little over a year ago about 14 months ago it is an outreach and engagement program that helps homeless individuals throughout the day so we're open from eight o'clock to one o'clock and throughout the day we try to provide a supportive positive environment we help people with different services to build trust in the homeless community whether it's showers whether it's having a laundry service there uh, non-perishable food items and as we build up that rapport and trust we let them know about all the other things we have to offer in the program mm -hmm. which are referrals for mental health services um, help 
become housing ready, um, help with any medical needs they may have. We work with different community partners and just really some, some trust to let them know we have case management services to help improve their quality of life. How do people reach out to you to get in touch with you for these services? The best way to do it is to look at our website, gracepointwellness.org, and we have a general number that can give you all the information you need. We also have a link to the foundation, so if you click on that, contact information is there and we can help connect you as well. So we were talking about how this has been very successful up until a day like today, but today is so important for an organization like yours. Why is today so important? Giving days are, are huge in our community for several reasons because it brings to light a lot of the things that so many of the individuals that work in the trenches and work in communities do each and every day. So this kind of day really sheds light on all the good work people are doing. It gets us really excited about to promote and talk more about that work, mm -hmm. tell stories. And so today is huge huge for us because when you get into the summer and you get in a lot of events and you get into later in the summer we want to make sure we keep philanthropy and charity work top of mind in our community and it really helps us do that through the summer so you're getting very close to your goal you're very excited about that what is a lot of that is there something specific you had in mind for the goal today or is it just in general what you can use I think we've already surpassed our goal which we're extremely excited about That's but awesome. I think when we set the goal we were just looking at what was actionable and reasonable to say can our community come together look at this program value this program how can they help us provide the services that we do the supplies that we need to do it each day when we went past the goal even before the day started and I was on Twitter at midnight watching everyone launch uh, their action their call to action for today it really helped set the momentum for the rest of the day and now that we're beyond our goal we know we can do so much more and reach so many more people yeah if there was one thing that you wanted the community to know about what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis for people in our community, what would that be? I'd say we are here to help you when you're in mental health care crisis, kind of a, a need. We are the behavioral health emergency room for Hillsborough County. We, we are here to help people really when they need us most. There is a stigma to associated with mental health. We're here to try to break that stigma, let people know we're here for them, create a safe conversation and environment for people to talk about things they really need to talk about and get the help that they need. Mental health has become such a hot topic these days. It is in the news. It is something that um, maybe people don't really understand or maybe we're just starting to pay a little more attention to. Have you found that you've been reached out to a lot more a lately? Lot, a lot more. And it, and it, and it's been sad that it's taken school shootings or it's been sure. taken high profile suicides for that to happen. Uh, the statistics are very clear. One in four people each year will experience some form of a mental illness. We all know somebody who's been impacted by mental illness. And so now that the conversation is much more open, we're providing that safe space to get rid of that stigma. Let's talk about the things that are going on. What are the issues that you're having? Let's help you get through that and come seek the help that you need. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and for everything that you're doing for our community. It's so important uh, what you're doing right now, especially in, in these times. Thank you so That's much great. for having us. And congratulations on your goal. That's fantastic. It's going to be a rest of a really great day, too. I appreciate it. All thank right. you so much. Thank you so much. Ian Adair with Grace Point Foundation. Thank you. While we wait for our next guest to tell you a little bit more about their nonprofit, we're going to go to our leaderboard now to get you an update on your total donations.
There are a number of Give Day incentives and prizes to encourage you to donate. The small, medium, and large nonprofits with the most unique donors each will get a $2,000 prize sponsored by the Brink Foundation, AARP, the Tampa Bay Rays Foundation, SunTrust, and the Lightning Foundation. So please give generously. All you have to do is go to giveday.org. And that is until midnight tonight. I now want to introduce you to Dee Dee Grundell. She is with Friends of the Joshua House Foundation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How's everything excited. going today? It's wonderful. It's exciting. You know how much energy is generated from Give Day. So it's wonderful when my phone is vibrating and pinging me every second. That's so. unusual that we like that, right? Yes. But it is good on a day like today. Yes. There is a lot of really good energy. So we want to know about Friends of Joshua House Foundation. Well, thank you so much for asking. Friends of Joshua House Foundation supports directly the children that call Joshua House home. And Joshua House is a therapeutic shelter for abused, abandoned, and neglected children. It is a program of the Children's Home Society of Florida, and 36 kids could call Joshua House home at any given time. So um, tell us a little bit about what happens there. Okay, well, at Joshua House, you know, kids are referred because they have already shown behaviors from significant trauma. It's either derived from their abuse, or it might even be derived from the amount of loss they've experienced, um, how many times they have moved through foster care into several different homes. Sometimes we get kids that have been in up to 30 homes by the time they get to Joshua House. So they have a significant amount of trauma and they have behaviors related to that trauma. How old? What are the ages? Of this? Six to 17 years old. Okay. Yes. And I'm sure that that brings a variety of different things that all of them are dealing with. Like puberty? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that could be one of them too. Yes. How, yes. how is all of that handled and taken care of within You this? know, everybody within Joshua House is trained very well to address the different needs of the children. Um, there is a clinical portion that is overseen by psychiatrists as well as uh, clinical therapists to work with the children. And then the residential staff are trained to address the children's daily needs plus their emotional stability. And everything kind of interlocks and works works cohesively mm -hmm. to wrap around the child or teen and provide them with the support to heal, recover, regain hope, and um, most important, to, to learn to cope. They have been badly abused. These are not kids that have done something wrong. These are kids that have had something terrible happen to them. And then their entire lives are torn asunder. They're sent into foster care. Their dog was left behind, their baby pictures, their grandmother. Everything that's important is essentially gone from their lives. And so the amount of loss is tremendous. And Joshua House helps them to recover and to learn to cope with the emotions that mm -hmm. they're feeling. That has to be a huge part of this. It, it is. It is. It's, it's really, it's not funny, but at the same time, it's very endearing to see like a nine-year-old boy who's, who's really trying to learn to cope with his anger issues. He's angry at his mom for losing him to foster care. He's angry at foster care for not bringing his dog along with him. He's angry at school because he's not doing very well with his grades. And he doesn't know what to do with that He anger. doesn't know what to do with it, but it's awesome to see him say, I'm just going to go outside for about 15 minutes Aww. to cope. <laughs> and you're like, you know, this is something we should be providing every child that comes into mm -hmm. foster care the therapy to help them deal with all this loss and then maybe as adults they won't be dealing with mental health issues you know they'll be able to have really strong and formidable relationships and good jobs and productive lives i'm sure you have some wonderful success stories we do we do i i absolutely love it when the joshua house kids reach back and want to say oh i lived there when i was you know 10 years old and you know and I just love the place, and yeah. I think that's one of the most heartwarming things mm -hmm. is to have them reach back, especially when they reach back and they say they want to work there and help the wow. other kids. That has to be yeah. heartwarming and it, amazing. It is. It How is long amazing. do they stay? You know, it's not. It's um, We'd like to keep the program under a year. We'd like for them to be in there and stabilize. But some kids um, are facing tremendous amounts of loss in their life. And sometimes it's a little longer. Sometimes it's a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the child isn't the right fit for the type of therapy. It's called a sanctuary model. And they have to make certain agreements. You know, they have to agree to not be violent. And they have to agree to have a certain amount of social responsibility and to give back themselves and become a part of the community. So if it's not right for them, you know, sometimes they're 
blessed onto a, a better program that might be more suitable to their needs. The donations that you'll get today from Give Day Tampa Bay, where is that money going? Oh, uh, yeah, we have a $20,000 goal. Okay. I think we're very close to 4000 right now, and so I'm hoping that we meet it. It is for a multi-sensory room. It is specific to therapy. So kids who have been seriously traumatized that are suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder quite often have a lot of built-up anxiety, and they don't sleep very well. They don't know what to do with their impulse controls, their anger. Um, the multi-sensory room is a wonderful room that uh, stimulates other senses and they have found that a lot of this fiber optic light therapy can really help heal post-traumatic stress disorder. They have, they've done studies at USF, they've done studies everywhere where they yeah. see great outcomes and it's another we, want tool. This, yeah. we want this tool for our kids. Absolutely. We want it badly. All right. Well, good luck to you today. Thank Dee you. Dee Grendel with the Friends of Joshua House Foundation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And thank you, Tampa Bay. All right. We're going to take you back to the leaderboard. We're going to check out the donations that you've been making all throughout Give Day Tampa Bay. Let's now talk to some folks who are experts on Give Day about how it works and how we are doing so far today. Allison Hedricks is here now to talk to us a little bit about this. And uh, so walk us through Give Day Tampa Bay. Uh, well, uh, nonprofits in the Tampa Bay area will register for Give Day to participate, and then they plan all these amazing activities. It's a great day to raise funds, but also raise awareness for these organizations in the Tampa Bay area and the great things that they do for everyone. This is a huge day when, for a lot of these nonprofits, some, I think we talked about before, this is one of their biggest days for fundraising correct it is it absolutely is it's you know it's amazing to see the effort that goes into it but also just so so light, so heartening to see all of the support for the different organizations and the stories that come out um, you know you get to hear about what these organizations have done in the community and how they've really impacted people's lives and the support that they need financially and this is a big big day for them so when people go online and they make that donation it is going straight to these nonprofits yes it's going straight to these nonprofits and the important thing to remember is that it's staying here in our community. It's organizations that serve our neighbors, our friends, our family, and those funds are going to support those organizations who in turn support, again, those neighbors and our family. This is the fifth year for it this, is. correct? It is. And it is. every year it just gets bigger and better. It does. And the organizations are getting more and more creative and uh, more vocal about tell telling their stories and how uh, Give Day is important to them and their organizations be able to allow, th allow them to do what they do. And it also gives them just an opportunity to just have a spotlight probably too, right? Absolutely. I mean, these organizations, they work behind the scenes a lot of times. Um, so this is a chance for the community to really get to know them and, um, you know, to, to express their interest even in becoming donors and volunteers with these organizations um, that really speak to the community's hearts. And the website allows you to go and explore all of these nonprofits yes. too. So all of the nonprofits are, are registered so they tell their story and kind of what their background is, what their mission is, um, and what the donations are going for and how they're used in the community. Yeah. Allison, thank you for talking with us thank about you. that. It's a great day. There are a lot of ways that you can decide how you want to start a nonprofit organization. So we're going to hear another story about someone deciding that they needed to to give back and help out. Well, my life's always revolved around the water in some way, shape, or form. It's been a big part of my life, and I suspect I'm, I'm not alone in that regard here in Tampa Bay. Our very geography revolves around the water. 
And Tampa Bay has come a long way in the last few decades in terms of water quality, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, we have uh, persistent wastewater pollution, um, industrial pollution, stormwater pollution, um, issues that we're going to work on here in Tampa Bay. Well, we're getting ready to start a Tampa Bay Swim Guide, which is a watershed-wide water quality monitoring program. We'll, we'll be using volunteers, trained volunteers, to sample for water quality throughout the watershed, including our rivers and our Gulf Coast beaches. And they'll be looking for things like harmful bacteria that are indicators of sewage pollution and, and other types of uh, stormwater pollution. And we'll make that, a da that data available to the public um, once a week, every week, all year long. So that come Friday, when you're getting ready to wait, make your weekend plans, you'll be able to pull up an app or check our social media feed or check our website and see what the water quality looks like wherever you like to play in Tampa Bay. Well, we're getting ready to start a Tampa Bay Swim Guide, which is a watershed-wide water quality monitoring program. We'll, we'll be using volunteers, trained volunteers, to sample for water quality throughout the watershed, including our rivers and our Gulf Coast beaches. And they'll be looking for things like harmful bacteria that are indicators of sewage pollution and, and other types of uh, stormwater pollution. And we'll make that, a da that data available to the public um, once a week, every week, all year long. So that come Friday, when you're getting ready to wait, make your weekend plans, you'll be able to pull up an app or check our social media feed or check our website and see what the water quality looks like wherever you like to play in Tampa Bay. Uh, another thing we're doing is we're partnering with other great nonprofits, Suncoast Surfrider and the Suncoast Rise Above Plastics Coalition to reduce plastic pollution in Tampa Bay. And uh, we're going to do that by working with local governments and local businesses to prevent plastic pollution from reaching our waterways in the first place. Uh, and also, um, we'll be having regular cleanups so that folks can get their hands dirty for clean water. Leaderboard. And so we want to show you the leaderboard right now, and we want to let you know we are at about $970,000, which means that we are nearing a million. Your donations throughout the day have been fantastic and so helpful. Keep them coming. We have plenty of time before midnight tonight to make those donations to not just hit a million dollars, but to surpass that and go way past it. I want to introduce you to our next guest now. This is Stuart Carver. He's with Family God's Way. Thank you for being here today. Great to be here, Allison. It's a good day, isn't it? It's an awesome day. <laughs> it is. So yeah. tell us about Family God's Way. Uh, for about 25 years, Family God's Way has been connecting families with the help they need to build strong families, strong legacies, mainly through their children and parenting and uh, just holding it together these days. Yeah. How, yeah. Have you, how do you do that? Um, our key catalyst is people with people. Uh, it's relational discipleship. So what we do is we create uh, venues we call platforms uh, where people can interact around the subject of family. So it, uh, it creates roles for people in the community to come alongside of other families and work together uh, and build friendships, relationships, and uh, role modeling, mentoring, support. And uh, those platforms are replicatable. In other words, we build a platform and you can you can plant it in a community virtually anywhere on the planet, and uh, it's locally supported, locally uh, operated. Uh, so that's our role is to create those platforms and help people implement them in their communities. And you said these days. Have you found that it's getting more <laughs> difficult? Sure. I think that's pretty self-evident yeah. that uh, we're, we're struggling a lot in this area of family. And um, I think we all um, share this one thing in common is that family is really what affects our lives most. It's where uh, most of the troubling issues that we see uh, in our world today sort of take root there. And in our happiest moments, that's where that's happening. And I, you talk a little bit about the impact that the father has on the home. And that sure. is, it's very, it's a big role. You know, I am completely amazed at how this uh, phenomenon has rolled out in front of us over the years with uh, the men and their involvement in their families and the impact that it has. and. Uh, working with families, you just have to get real with the fact that uh, it's really on the dads and on the fathers to take up their roles and responsibilities within the family. And when we do well there, we do well in family. And when we don't do well there, we don't do well in family. Where do you find uh, that, obviously, you're seeing that, that they are not doing well? But it, does it come at a breakdown all the way down to the children and then into how that mm -hmm. family works as a unit? You know, the dynamic is continues to sort of explode uh, 
and we're into a generation now where uh, some of the concepts that we promote in Family God's Way um, are foreign, in a way, to the young men who are now growing up, maturing, and engaging in family themselves today. So mm -hmm. it's really a, a phenomenal problem. You can see this. Um, a good example is there's a proposal on the president's desk to, to begin a, a White House Council on Boys and Men. Uh, that's a sign that um, as a world and as a community, we're beginning to realize that uh, we have a need. Mm -hmm. So how do you step in then and help out with those roles and kind of get, um, kind of reshape that? You know, that's a great question. And what we find is, you know, there's really a curricular approach and there's a uh, kind of programmatic, if you will, and then the relational discipleship approach that Family God's Way promotes. And we found that uh, the relational discipleship approach, while it's, um, it's less definitive, you don't put it necessarily in a book between a couple of covers, sure. it's more effective over the long run. And I believe the reason for that is it goes back to what we're missing to begin with. If we get that good relational discipleship early on when we're kids and we're growing up and we're watching our parents put it together, somehow we know how to do that a little better when we're grown and we're doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So today's a big day for giving and uh, donations, and I'm sure you have a goal and you have ideas where you want this money to go. Where is that? What I, you know, if, if I can just come back to my goal, because it's not a direct answer to your question, sure. but our goal is just exactly what's happening here to, today. It's the community involvement and making, um, uh, someone said earlier about uh, giving our community eyes and to see what happens all the time with all of these nonprofits and that we can have this venue um, uh, uh, to, to get that word out and show people what's happening every day. Uh, I think that's what's most important to me is more than just the dollars and cents. It's that we're coming together in a sense of community thanks mm -hmm. to our host and things like that. And uh, so that, that's what means a lot to me today is to see us working together. And it gives you a chance to put a spotlight on what you're doing in the community. And people in Tampa Bay are able to see what's happening. Yes, yes. That's got to be special for you and for your organization. I'm enjoying it. Yes, yeah. I am. And, uh, I wanted to point out uh, you can connect with us at www.familygodsway.com. Wonderful. Thank you for talking with us Thank today. You. Thank you for what you're doing in our community, too. Great. There are a number of Give Day incentives and prizes to encourage you to donate. The foundation prize of $5,000 each is awarded to both the small nonprofit and the large nonprofit in the art and culture category with most online donors today. So be sure to continue to give generously and help support arts and culture in the Tampa Bay area. You can do that by going to giveday.org. All right, we're going to take you now back to our leaderboard. We're getting close to a million dollars, so let's check it out and see how we're doing. We're doing great with those donations. Keep them coming. Again, go to giveday.org. Our next guests are from the Clearwater Audubon Society, Stephanie Anderson, Barbara Walker, and two very special guests. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank Who you. did you bring along with you? Uh, this is a sunshine. Sunshine's a swallowtail kite. And She's very excited. This is her first time, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She really is. <laughs> and Stephanie, who do you have? This is Josie. She's a two-year-old barn owl. And so tell us then about, you brought them along, obviously. Why did you bring them with you today? Well, that kind of relates to the purpose of our entire organization. Um, we're Clearwater Audubon Society, and we're 
part of Audubon Florida and a part of National Audubon. And the goals of those organizations are really to make sure to promote conservation and care of birds for today and tomorrow. Because when you take care of birds, you take care of everything. Um, when you have uh, the opportunity to see a rare bird like this up close, there's a, there's a better chance that you're going to care about it in the future. So tell us a little bit about Sunshine, you said? Sunshine. Tell us a little bit about Sunshine. So Sunshine um, is a swallowtail kite. Swallowtail kites actually used to nest in 21 different states, and now they're down to seven. About 2,500 pair um, left in the wild. Uh, they return in our area in early March, and they nest here, and Florida carries the population of these birds. When they're done with their nesting, they gather in very, very large colonial roosts that are in critical wildlife areas that have been designated throughout the state. And then they go across the Gulf of Mexico towards the Yucatan Peninsula and deep into South America. So this bird was downed in uh, Deep Creek Plantation up in North Florida and rescued by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and deemed non-releasable due to uh, blindness in the left eye and uh, unable to fly. Swallowtail kites are uh, the, one of the most acrobatic and maneuverable birds in the world. And uh, without uh, that full ability, she would not survive. And so that's part of what you're doing. You're helping her survive. Yeah, absolutely. She's now become an ambassador for her species. This bird isn't actually listed as an endangered bird, which it really should be, but is listed as a bird of the greatest conservation need. They um, have a very diverse diet. So if you protect songbirds, you're protecting swallowtail kites. If you protect um, water, you're protecting swallowtail kites. If you protect um, any... Uh, agricultural area, you're protecting swallowtail kites because they um, they have a diverse diet. They eat baby birds, they eat bats, they eat a lot of insects. So over agricultural areas, this bird is extremely valuable to people. Mm -hmm. And you're able to make those connections. All right, we I are. think the barn owl wants a little bit of attention over there. <laughs> what is her name again? Her name is Josie. We call Josie. her Josie. She's about two years old. She was rescued right here in St. Pete area. Okay. Um, fell out of a nest that was way up in a high building. Okay, we weren't able to renest her. She, her issue is uh, she's imprinted on humans, which in itself is a, is a is an injury for them because okay, once they become very dependent on humans, um, they can't be released back into the wild because they kind of I don't know, they almost think they're human, sure. so they don't they they don't hunt the way they're supposed to. Um, this bird is is fully flighted. She can fly. She can see. Um, she just would be a little confused, I guess, um, if she was out in the wild. They are native to Florida. They're all over the world, everywhere except Antarctica. And um, actually in Pinellas County, there's not too many. Um, they are not long-lived birds. They only live two to five years in the wild. They're very susceptible to poisoning. Habitat loss is a problem for a lot of these birds here. Um, you know, one of the things we try to do is reach young people, children, and teach them about conservation and conserving habitat for birds and water and all the things that affect them that will ultimately affect us. Yeah. Um, so th that's mostly what our program does. These birds are ambassadors and we try to teach people. Do you um, go to schools and do that? Do they come yes, to we you? Do. We do. We, go, yes. we do Great American Teaching every year. Um, we'll do things upon request. We go to all kinds of schools. People come to our facility to see the birds as well. Mm -hmm. This has to be so special when you see those kids learning about how they are impacting the lives of just not the birds, but their whole community, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know. And kids, very often, you don't know right away if, if something's sunken with them. You mm -hmm. know, kids are kind of funny that way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but they'll repeat stuff back to you. When they learn facts about owls or about kites, they'll go home and tell their parents yeah. and tell their friends, you know. So, you know, the other thing about um, these birds have a role in our ecosystem. Owls are natural pest control. They eat rats, they eat mice, and they eat all those things that people don't around, want around their homes. Yeah. Uh, so um, if you have owls and a healthy population of owls, then they help control rodent populations as well. This is a big day for giving. And what are these donations, what does that mean to the Clearwater Audubon Society? So um, the bird program with Clearwater Audubon is, is, fairly, is fairly new. And we really need to, to build some groundswelling support. Um, 
Believe it or not, for the swallowtail kite and the barn owl are both birds that cost $1,200 a year to support with food and veterinary care. So um, we are just thrilled to be here and to have an opportunity to build awareness that we're there. Um, our organization actually has partnership with the city of Clearwater. We're located at Moccasin Lake Nature Park and we run the, the raptor sanctuary portion of the park. And the city has been very generous and they are actually building us a raptor care center as well as an office for Clearwater Audubon. So if so, somebody wanted to come by, how do they get more information? What is their um, website for you? Okay, so they should check the Clearwater Audubon Society Facebook page. Oh, great. And um, people also can call me directly. Um, our phone numbers are on our Clearwater Audubon Society.org website. So they can just look for Barbara Walker and call me directly. Because we, we actually have young people that volunteer with us mm -hmm. and we give bright future hours. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for coming by. Thank you for bringing them Thank along you. too. They're beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right, we want to take you back to the leaderboard. We have some very good news. We have hit a million dollars. Thank you so much for all of your donations. We appreciate that. Here you go. One more time checking out the leaderboard. Lots of excitement. This is fantastic news that we have been able to make a million dollars. This is huge news. We've so, made a million dollars. It's a surprise, Allison. <laughs> yes, this is a surprise. This is, we just crossed the million dollar mark just a few minutes ago, and this is the earliest in the day we have ever reached that milestone. That's fantastic. So everybody was so excited. We said we just have to dance our way out and Absolutely. celebrate. And they did. Yeah, and they the did. energy has been so great today. It really has. I think the nonprofits love being together here mm -hmm. and talking to each other. And, you know, we just, as soon as we said, hey, let's, let's make a conga line. Everybody jumped up and yeah. got their props and was ready to go. So that is awesome that it is this early in the day and it's already hit a million dollars what yeah. do you think that says about our community well i think it says that this is a great giving community but i think it also says that our nonprofits have been working very hard leading yeah. up to this day they've a lot of them have really the light bulb has come on about what this day can mean and how to run a great campaign and just reaching out to all of the generous people in our community so we're very excited yeah you know Let's uh, hope you're still around when we cross the next million that today. That would be amazing. We could <laughs> we'll make dance that again. happen. Yes. I know you lost the conga line. They've already taken off without you. You're going to have to dance yourself off. Oh, probably no one wants to see that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Congratulations. Allison. A million dollars. Let's check out that leaderboard one more time. Again, we have passed a million dollars today on Give Day Tampa Bay.
Once again, we have passed $1 million. Thank you so much for all of your donations. Continue to give. We want this to be a huge day for the Tampa Bay community. And we would like you to give to New Life Village. I'd like to introduce you now to Mariah Hayden. She is the interim director. Thank you for being here. Thank you for it's having me. It's an exciting day. It is. You got to be here as we passed the million dollar mark. That's fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Birds and a so, million dollars. I'm <laughs> very excited. Yeah. And we're very excited to learn. Tell us more about New Life Village. So New Life Village is, um, there's a lot of adjectives here. We're an intentional intergenerational affordable housing village okay and so what that means is basically we're pairing two populations together we're part we're pairing families who are affecting po um, excuse me foster care positively so they're preventing a child from going to foster care they're, they've adopted a child from foster care or they're currently fostering a child and they live in the community at affordable housing rates it's a, it's a thank you to them for positively affecting foster care Hillsborough County has the worst numbers in the state's mm -hmm. state of foster care so it's an incentive there but the other community that lives there are senior citizens so they come in and they also live there and they serve as surrogate grandparents tutors wow. respite care and so we have this townhouse com townhome community we're on 11 acres and we are the village that raises the child um, and then these two communities are living together to raise these children that have been affected by trauma, who've seen hard times, to show them safety, security, love, and family on a bigger level. And then we have a program there. It's like a, living at a YMCA. So we've got cook camps and birthday parties and Christmas celebrations um, and, all, and mentoring events and all different types of stuff right there on site. How old are the children that come there? Birth to 18. Wow. We have about 56 children who live there now, um, a combination of adopted children, foster children, um, some reunification children. And those are two huge impacts on you know the family and then to also have the grandparents to have that yes. positive impact on the kids has to be amazing for them. It is amazing for them. It, and it's also that old school neighborhood, that old school yeah. neighborhood where the community comes together and, and disciplines the kids and, you know, get off the sidewalk or, you know, um, congratulates them when they get on a roll. Um, they're, they're also really amazing to each other. These kids um, become each other's siblings. They're mm -hmm. growing up together. They're going to football together. They're going to birthday parties together. So the fabric of our community, definitely the synergy makes a greater whole. Now, the, explain how the children come to this village? How does that happen? Um, they're referred different ways. Okay. A lot of the agencies in the area will refer them like Eckerd or any of the case management agencies like um, Gulf Coast or um, just different agencies that work with families in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of kinship families there too and our kinship families are family members, grandparents, aunts and uncles that are preventing their relatives from going into foster care. So Hillsborough County does a really good job with kinship support and they refer us a lot of people as well. And this is so important not just to the development of the child but for the community as a whole to have these kids have this kind of experience. Yes ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma so today with these donations what are you hoping uh, to do with this money, this goal that you have Set. Absolutely. Well, we have two goals. Our most immediate goal is a playground. We really need a oh. playground. We're on 11 acres and we're only a third developed. Um, and the kids have been without a playground for two years. So we're about 75% fundraised. We need about 35 more thousand to get us a playground for them to play on. I, everyone knows how important it is for kids yeah. to play together, to be outside away from those TV screens and computer screens playing together. Um, we just recently got a sunshade, so the playground will be shaded, which is awesome. Um, and then our second goal is because we have 11 acres and we're only a third developed, uh, a while ago a donor paid off our mortgage and our property. Mm -hmm. So the rents pay for the program, um, but we want to start building more townhouses to serve yeah. more families. So we're um, launching into a capital campaign where we'll develop more buildings as well. Well, good luck today. It is a wonderful day to give, and we certainly hope the best for you. Thank you for what you're doing in our community. Thank that you, sounds like a really awesome program. This is Mariah Hayden with New Life Village. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to get our next guests up here and seated. We're going to go back to our leaderboard again. We have passed a million dollars. Keep those donations coming. Here's a look at those totals.
Our next nonprofit for Give Day Tampa Bay is Wheels of Success. We're going to get to them in just a couple of minutes because they have been a big part of our community and have been giving away cars to needy residents for several years. In fact, they are giving away three cars today for Give Day. So let's go live to reporter Mike Deason, who is standing by for the announcement of their latest car giveaway. Hey, Mike. Hey, Allison. This is like deja vu being I with know. you. I uh, really, I'm with uh, some folks here where you can actually see how Give Day can make a difference in a person's life. This is Susan Jacobs. Jacobs, her um, wheels of success. This is Brittany Ely, who's going to get this car behind us, who does not know what the car is. Sherry Lowe and Larry Guilford are with Make a Difference, which work with wheels of success to give away the cars. Susan, tell me how your organization works. So we take donated vehicles from the community, refurbish them, and they go back out to people who need a car to get to work. So this is all about keeping folks working, helping them be productive. Uh, Brittany is going to be able to possibly go back to school, get a promotion at her job because she's in hospitality. And without a car, you can't get there early. You can't stay late. All of the things we all take for granted. Because imagine going to the grocery store if you could only buy what you could carry. How many cars have you guys given away? So this is going to be our 980th car, and we've also done a similar amount of services because we actually do repairs, we help with insurance, with tag and title, anything that's car-related that's going to get you in a car. And the recipients have to have some skin in the game. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that. So they have to be, first of all, referred either by their employer or a social service agency like Make a Difference, who referred Brittany. Uh, and they pay something towards the car. It's a minimal amount, not even probably 25% of the value of the car. But we want them to have skin in the game because it's your car. It needs the oil change. It needs you to take care of it. And you need to know that it's yours. After one year of paying uh, the monthly fee, which is about $125 a month, you get the title to the car. And it's your car to do whatever you choose. Um, and normally changes somebody's life pretty dramatically. Let's talk to someone whose life's going to change. She's been crying most of the <laughs> afternoon here. So, can, but uh, Brittany, tell me what this is going to do for your life. Honestly, for me, this is going to open up so many different opportunities. Like Miss Susan said, now I have the opportunity to get to school again, to find better positions, just so my life and my children's life can be so much better than what it has been over the past few years. People don't realize how limited you are without a vehicle. Correct. Like you can't get as far as you would like to better yourself because you have the risk of, well, how am I going to get there? And how old are your kids? I have a five-year-old and a six-year-old. So they must be really excited too. They are very excited. They didn't want to go to school today, but, you know, they had to stay in. Okay. Are you ready to see? She she has no idea what this car is underneath here. Are, are you ready to see? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Calm down. She's not crying now. She's not crying now. We're doing good. Okay, let's let's move this, and we can all together. You ready? Are you ready? Uh, here, cry. She's crying again. She says, oh, "Wait, it's locked. Oh, how do we unlock it, guys? You got the key? Let's let's." Go in your glove compartment that's your registration. Okay. And your AAA. That's Thank provided you. by AAA to you. Thank you. Another one of our partners. So what do you, what do you, okay, come on, come out here so Robert can get Very emotional person. Oh, well, that's good. No, this is a big, this is a big deal. So tell me what you're thinking now. I can restart my life all over again. And get back on track of things that I lost for the past few years. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. No. It's, go ahead. Get in your car. That's okay. This must make you guys feel great. Absolutely, it does. It's uh, it's very very important, especially what Susan's been doing for many, many years. And we brought it out to East Pasco because out there it's even more desolate as far as driving around. So Started on the first time. Good. <laughs> Because if you don't have a car, you don't have money, you don't have a job probably. All three work together, and without them, you're, you're kind of in tough luck. Yeah, so. that's for sure. And this is a, a prime example what Give Day is all about. When you look at Brittany and, and see how this is going to change her life, you can change people's lives if you get involved with Give Day as well. So we want to thank you guys uh, for making this possible. Susan, thanks. Thank Tell you. me now thank if you. people want to get involved. 
So yeah, if you we'll want to get involved, it takes three thousand dollars to refurbish a car. So any amount, twenty-five dollars buys windshield wiper blades, and a hundred dollars will buy a battery. So no amount is too small to get a car back on the road for us. But we couldn't do it without our partner, Make a Difference, because that's what we're about: partnerships. And how do people get in contact with you guys? You have a website. We do. It's wheelsofsuccess.org. So you can go on the website and join our Nuts and Bolts Club that we just started. Be a member. And what about the, the cars? Where do, you, do some people donate the cars? There's Tell me about that. They all donated from people. But, Larry, why don't you okay, talk Larry. about where you got this one? Well, yes, this one here actually was donated. Uh, the car itself was donated free and clear, but it was, wasn't was running. Okay. Yeah. So uh, make a difference. Basically put the repairs together. Uh, so they were done at the dealership. So it has all the tires uh, all the way through. Go walk through the car to make sure there's no issues. And then we also stand behind the car for 90 days to make sure nothing, you know, yeah. strange pops up as things can happen. Right. And uh, that's pretty much what we try to do. And uh, she has another car tonight, a little later. Uh, so make another person's day tonight, okay. which is really important. Brittany, you doing okay? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm better now. I'm better. I'm better. <laughs> so what do you think of the car? You've a chance to look oh at my it. God. It's beautiful. Like, it's just so much space and... Enough room for the boys and everything. More than enough room for the boys. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thank you, Susan, Larry, Sherry, Terry. Thank you guys so much. This is what Give Day is all about. Thank you all so much. Allison? That's exactly Back right, Mike. That is what it's all about. You could just see the weight lifted off of her shoulders. It's so wonderful Absolutely. to see that for her today. Mike, thanks. And that wraps it up for this hour of Give Day Tampa Bay. But stay tuned next hour for Ernest Hooper, who will be hosting our live program. But most of all, log on to GiveDay.org anytime before midnight tonight and make a contribution to your favorite nonprofit organization. You can choose from over 400 organizations, and you'll be supporting those groups who keep the Tampa Bay area healthy and strong. Thanks for supporting Give Day. I'm Allison Croft. We'll see you in the next hour. Welcome to Give Day Tampa Bay 2018, live.